topic. We've been reading out messages about um, this idea that came out in the week, and I'm going to defend Labour here, which was that you could bring back EU free movement for the under 30s, which was a gross exaggeration of what was actually being uh, talked about. Um, I, I, I'm trying to analyse how worried people really are. Is it a threat to Brexit? For me, Brexit was about controlling the border, deciding who's coming in, and I know that seems a bit of a joke with all the small boats coming over. It was never about shutting the border, and I'm not sure that actually this is such a bad idea to come to an arrangement that allows a certain number of people to come to this country um, with more fr less, less bureaucracy, less restrictions for a set period of time. Um, very pleased to say I'm joined by Charles Amos, political commentator, Young Voices. Charles, welcome. Good afternoon. So is this um, idea, which to be fair, I think was overhyped as bringing back EU free movement for under 30s. Um, but is this a threat to young people or is it something we should look at more closely? I think it's a wonderful opportunity for young people. It allows individuals in this country to freely associate with those in Spain or France or Romania. And equally well, it allows people in Romania, France and Germany to associate with people freely in this country. So I think it's a win-win for both sets of young people and something that should be welcomed by everyone in Britain and particularly Liberals. A lot of a lot of people here will have been have been saying to me, uh, including this message that I had from uh, I think it was Christine. Let me just check that. Yes, uh, Catherine um, was basically saying, look, it's going to be one sided, though, because you've got countries, for example, by Spain. And we know that one of the champions for this was the Prime Minister Sanchez of Spain in talks with Keir Starmer. They've still got very high youth unemployment. And this means that someone coming over here can work here. And actually, it will just set us back in our efforts to get British people back to work when we've got such high levels of economic inactivity. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I would say this, the level of economic inactivity that we have among young people is not due to their inability to find jobs. Finding jobs, as long as people aren't too picky about them, is very easy. I know that as a fact because I was applying for jobs uh, not too long ago. and. Yes, it will allow lots of people from Europe into this country to find employment, but that shouldn't really be too much of a problem because we've got a very flexible labour market, certainly compared to the Spanish and French labour market in particular, where it's very hard to fire people and as a result, very uh, employers are very reluctant to hire people. So I don't, perhaps it is one-sided, but it's not really something I'm concerned about. What I'm really concerned about is whether or not people are free to move. I think people have a right to freely move from country to country. And insofar as that advances this right, then it should be welcomed. Look, I, 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 I'm, I'm counterintuitive this is because I, I'm, I was a solid Brexiteer. I even sat around the negotiating table with, 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 uh, during the withdrawal agreement days. But um, I'm actually quite supportive of the principle behind this. So let's explore it a little closer. We, we have agreement, trade agreements in place with Australia. We have trade agreements in place with Japan and elsewhere. Almost all of them include an element of a youth mobility scheme of one sort or another. The numbers are quite low. They are, I think it's 6,000 uh, for Japan. I'm not sure what the Australian figure is off the top of my head. Isn't the problem with doing a deal with the EU is that we would be talking very high numbers and that's going to make people feel very uncomfortable that they've lost, if you like, a principle beh uh, uh, behind Brexit was, was not to have, was have more control over your borders. I don't think any control is being lost as a result of this agreement because the government has the power to not sign the agreement if it wishes not to. I think the concern that the majority of Brexiteers had with immigration back in 2016 and still have today is that the level of immigration that we've seen and probably will see with this agreement will put an undue strain upon infrastructure and housing. And I won't dispute the fact that as a result of allowing lots of Romanian and Bulgarian young people to come to this country, there will, all else equal, be an increase in rent and probably in 
the number of people on waiting lists too, although to a rather limited extent, given it's only 18 to 30 year olds that are being allowed here. But, but, but just, I don't can I just ask you a question before we finish that point? Sorry. I'm not sure I like the idea of whether they're from Australia or the EU, of someone coming over here and being able to claim benefits or housing support or anything like that. Is that something you would envisage? No. I, well, I expect that it will come with uh, entitlements to benefits, given it's the Labour Party that we're discussing here, but I would not want it to come with entitlements to benefits. I'm quite happy for young people to come and work in this country, provided they stand on their own two feet. Mm -hmm. But disregarding the issue about benefits, they are still going to put a pressure on housing. Sure. People such as Nigel Farage and Richard Tice will say this undue pressure on housing is reason to limit immigration down to the tens of thousands, and that will require not having this agreement in place. But what I was going to say is I dispute that this is reason to restrict the free movement of people. If lots of people from Sunderland wanted to move down into Bristol and that increased the house prices in Bristol, we wouldn't say, well, we can't have free movement between Sunderland and Bristol. So I would say with analogous reasoning that just because people moving from Bulgaria to Britain will put an increase on house prices does not mean that that is reason for the state to stop them from moving to Bulgaria no, uh, and I'll tread carefully here because I can say some pretty daft things, I, I know that, but there would be a difference, wouldn't there, that actually those people moving from Sunderland to Bristol would have been inherently part of this country, have hopefully paid their fair share of taxes. Have been, so so it, it, I think the unfairness comes is actually you're suddenly bringing in people who are going to draw on the infrastructure and the system who up till that point haven't really contributed. Is that fair? Well... Well, I don't think there's a fair point because there are lots of people in Sunderland that are net recipients from the welfare state. They've taken out the whole... Don't pick on Sunderland, mind. by the way. Let's be clear. That's not peculiar well, to Sunderland. Well, it's not peculiar to Sunderland, but northern areas on the whole contribute less to the Treasury than southern well, areas. Well, I'm going to have to have that checked for you, but yes, OK. Well, I think, OK, I think that is a generalisation, but I think that is the case. Um, those people have not contributed net on a net basis. So if you're going to say we can't allow Bulgarians into the UK because they haven't contributed on a net basis, then you've got to say, well, we can't allow people from Sunderland to go down to Bristol because they haven't contributed on a net basis either. I don't think your ability but, to but, move within an area is determined by whether or not... Charles, I don't want to get bogged down on that point, but there is a difference if you are a national of a country and the state owes you an obligation that it's chosen through various democratic choices to do. I think I, that is a big difference to someone coming in from Bulgaria. Listen, I hadn't realised the time. It was very good of you to join us. I know we got to you at very... Uh, changed the time at the last minute. Thank you for uh, the discussion. Uh, that was Charles Amos, political commentator with Young Voices. Look,